projecting the balance sheet items working capital we have already completed the first iteration forecast of the income statement except for the depreciation and amortization expense and the interest income and interest expenses and also the diluted shares outstanding numbers let us now turn our attention to the balance sheet line items. Please hit control page down to reach the balance sheet tab. As you have noticed, we have already filled historical and will now start projecting the line items of the balance sheet. The first thing to look at in the balance sheet is the working capital numbers. Working capital is defined as current assets minus current liabilities. The working capital numbers on the current asset side are account receivables, inventory, other current assets. Likewise, the working capital figures on the current liabilities side are accounts payable, accrued liabilities, other current liabilities. Moving on to the working capital schedule by pressing control page down. Sales and COGS forecasts for 2010 onwards are already estimated. Here we will cross-link these sales and COGS from the income statement tab to the working capital sheet. For navigation from one sheet to another, we should use control page up or control page down. Also remember that these links will be green in color as they are cross links between different tabs. Additionally, we need to complete the link of historical working capital balances from the balance sheet working tab. Be careful to link these to the respective line items as wrong linkage even for a single line item may lead to mismatch in the assets and liabilities on the balance sheet. Do note that we are not considering the projection of cash in the current assets as cash will be plug number that will flow from the cash flow statements. Also note that we are not considering the projection of short term debt in the current liabilities as short term debt will get calculated separately in the debt and interest schedule. We can now calculate the total non-cash current assets and total non-debt current liabilities for the historical years. Complete the remaining details like net working capital that is total non-cash assets minus total debt current liabilities. Increase or decrease in working capital for fiscal year 2008 will be 2007 net working capital minus 2008 net working capital that is is equal to B19 minus C19 is equal to negative 39.3 million. Now we are done with all the basic homework for forecasting the working capital balances. Projecting working capital is done in two steps. Step 1 consists of completing the historical ratios and historical driver calculations. Step 2 involves estimation of the ratios based on the historical calculations and then back calculating the future working capital line items. Let us first complete step 1. For this we have to revisit our ratio analysis classes. Let us quickly run through the turnover ratios. For the calculation of turnovers we either require sales or cogs in the numerator. Account receivables turnover ratio is equal to sales divided by average receivables. Accounts receivables collections period is equal to 365 divided by account receivables turnover ratio. Remember, any time we mix the ratio of income statement with the balance sheet, we use average balance sheet numbers as the balance sheet is at a point in time during the end year and average makes it more comparable and provides a smoothening effect to the ratios. However, in our case, we will simply use the ending balance because of two reasons. 
Number one, we don't have to put the 2006 balance sheet details as this may add on to another level of pain at this stage. And number two would be that we are a bit lazy. However, please note, when you are making a real financial model, you always have to take average balances rather than year-end balance. Let us redefine our formula for account receivables turnover ratio is equal to sales divided by year-end receivables. For 2007, receivables turnover ratio will be sales of 2007 divided by receivables of 2007 is equal to B5 divided by B9 is equal to 6.3. However, for calculation of receivables collections period, we need to divide 365 by 6.3. Here, the answer comes out to be 58.2 days. For 2008 and 2009, these numbers are 50.7 and 43.6 days. Now coming to the inventory processing period is equal to 365 divided by inventory turnover ratio. Here inventory turnover ratio is defined as COGS divided by ending inventory. Please note again that we will not use average inventory to make this simplified model. However, average balance is strongly suggested. For 2007, inventory turnover ratio will be COGS of 2007 divided by inventory of 2007 is equal to B6 divided by B10 is equal to 5.2. However, for calculation of inventory processing period, we need to divide 365 by 5.2. The answer is 70.3 days. For 2008 and 2009, these numbers are 66.5 and 62.9 days. On the current assets side, we also have other current assets. The driver for its forecast will be other current assets as a percentage of sales. For 2007, 2008 and 2009 this percentage comes out to be 3.0%, 2.4% and 2.1% respectively. For current liabilities we have accounts payable period, accrued liabilities and other current liabilities. For accounts payable period the formula is 365 divided by accounts payable turnover ratio. Here, accounts payable turnover ratio is defined as COGS divided by ending payable. For 2007, accounts payable turnover ratio will be COGS of 2007 divided by accounts payable of 2007 is equal to B6 divided by B14 is equal to 8.2. However, for calculation of payable collections period, we need to divide 365 by 8.2, that is 44.3 days. For 2008 and 2009, these numbers are 42.0 and 45.7 days. For accrued liabilities and other current liabilities, the forecast driver is percentage of COGS. Accrued liabilities as a percentage of COGS for 2007 is equal to B15 divided by B6 is equal to 10.6%. Likewise, these numbers are 8.4% and 7.9%. For 2008 and 2009 respectively, other current liabilities for 2007, 2008 and 2009 are 4.0%. 3.3% and 3.7%.